Hi, my name is Dr. Benjamin Prince, and I am an allergist immunologist at Nationwide Children's in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about primary immune deficiency diseases, or PIDDs. Before we go into what a primary immune deficiency disease is, I want to just quickly give you an overview of the immune system. The immune system is actually a complex system uh, in our bodies that uh, is made up of many different cell types, tissues, and organs that all function together in order to help protect you from invading pathogens in the world around us. Uh, and it's somebody that has a primary immune deficiency disease, um, they typically will have a genetic defect that's either inherited by one or from one of their parents or can occur spontaneously that results in an area or a part of your immune system to not function appropriately and ultimately leads to more severe and recurrent infections. When evaluating somebody for a primary immune deficiency disease, it's important to rule out other causes of, immune, of secondary immune deficiency or other reasons why an individual might be becoming more susceptible to infections. There are a variety of different things that, that we look to in that evaluation and, they, in resulting in, and people can have many different reasons for getting infections uh, from secondary reasons, including comorbid diseases, anatomical abnormalities, medications that result in immune suppression, and either other infections that either result in the destruction of certain parts of your immune system or predispose to a secondary infection. It is not uncommon for some individuals to get mild, uh, transient, viral upper respiratory tract infections. And in certain populations, such as in daycares or schools, this, this occurs um, quite frequently. One differentiating factor between those kinds of infections and patients that have primary immune deficiencies our patients that have primary immune deficiencies get much more severe infections that are recurrent. They also get infections with bacteria, viruses, and fungi that don't cause disease in healthy individuals. Because of their underlying immune deficiency, it's not uncommon for people that have primary immune deficiencies to also present with poor growth and development and suffer from failing to thrive. If your doctor is concerned that you or a loved one might have a primary immune deficiency, they may send laboratory tests that assess different cells or proteins in the body or blood that are important for your immune system to function. It's very important to diagnose an immune deficiency early. This is because there are a variety of different treatment options and oftentimes early intervention can help prevent other comorbidities or complications from occurring. The treatments for primary immune deficiencies are actually quite broad and can range from simple antibiotics to prevent infection or quickly treat an acute infection to biologic medications that can be used to augment the immune system to antibody replacement in the form of subcutaneous immunoglobulin replacement or IVIG and in even some um, more severe immune deficiencies um, we can use therapies such as gene therapy or even replacement of uh, the immune system with a new, more appropriately functioning immune system in the form of a stem cell transplant. If you are concerned that you might have a primary immune deficiency, I would encourage you to reach out to your doctor to get a referral to be evaluated by, a, by an allergist immunologist or a specialist that deals with primary immune deficiency. You can also Go on the internet to the Quad AI website. Um, there's more videos available there to give you more information. There's other websites such as the Immune Deficiency Foundation that has wonderful information on lots of different kinds of immune deficiencies and how they present, how they're managed, and when you should be concerned about possibly having a primary immune deficiency. Thank you for your time.